Hi everybody out there, this is Joe Astorino and today we're going to be taking a look at how to build a Cisco access server for your home lab on a Cisco 2500 series router. I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to walk you right into my home lab and I'm going to show you one of my uh, 2509 Cisco access servers that I use to remotely access home equipment and I'm going to show you what that physically looks like, how the cabling works uh, so you can get a little bit better idea of what you're dealing with and then of course we're going to jump on to the command line and I'm going to show you how exactly to configure one of these. It's one of the most basic questions, one of the most frequent questions that uh, I get all the time is how do I go about configuring and setting up an access server so that I can access multiple devices basically at the same time uh, in my home lab. It's a great skill to know when you're working on uh, really any Cisco certification all the way from CCNA up through the CCIE. So let's take a look at the home lab. Okay, so here we are and I'm actually just going to walk you guys right into uh, my home lab area here and we're going to take a look at uh, what an access server looks like. So this would be an access server right here. This is my uh, 2509 router. You can see it's a Cisco 2500 series router. And mine happens to be called Hendrix because uh, I name all my routers after musicians uh, that I quite enjoy. So Jimi Hendrix. And uh, the front, not all that exciting, but let's take a look around the back, which will really help you understand the configuration when we look at it. So the first thing you might notice is, what is this thing here with the, with the lights on it and the ethernet cable? Well on these older routers, um, they had ethernet on them, but they had, if you can see that there, it's a very old style of ethernet called AUI. And it looks kind of like, more like a serial connection. Let me see if I can pull that off. That's what it looks like. That's AUI ethernet. And that's what they had on uh, old things like sun boxes and some of this early Cisco gear before they went to shielded twisted pair. So what we have here is a AUI to Cat5 or 10 base T Ethernet converter. They call it a transceiver. And you can pick these up on eBay or out online for probably about 10 bucks. And all it does is convert it into a style of Ethernet we can use today. So that simply goes to this cable, and the cable then goes up to, you know, a regular network switch. So that's your Ethernet interface to get it on the network. Then what you have here, of course, you've got your uh, console connection, aux connection, power. And this right here is the guts of what makes a access server work. You'll see that's labeled there. And that says async 1 through 8. And that's asynchronous serial one through eight and you'll see this blue cable and they call this an octopus cable because it's got eight of these little serial connections on it now even though it's a RJ45 looking end on it I'll just show you one of them so it looks like a uh, Ethernet cable right well it's really a serial cable with an RJ45 end on it now there's eight of these different devices and basically what you would do is you would physically plug in one of these cables into the console port of all your different devices so I've got one of these for instance going up here to this router so you see this cable number one they're all labeled one through eight so number one goes into the console of this router here number two might go to this switch up here and so on and so forth. So basically you're physically connecting into the console port of, uh, in this case, up to eight different devices. Now the 2509 model can do up to eight connections. And there's a 2511 model that you can use to connect up to 16 devices. Very popular with the home web. So the basic idea is you take your octopus cable here, you take these different ends, Make sure to note which number plugs into which device, and you're going to go ahead and plug them into all your different devices. 
And that's really all there is to it on the physical end of things. Everything else is going to be in the configuration. So I thought I'd show you that first, and now we'll get into the configuration. Okay, now that you guys have seen what an access server physically looks like, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the configuration of a Cisco access server on a real live 2511 uh, AS here that's being used for my home lab. So I'm just telnetting in to the access server so I can hit the specific pieces of the configuration. Now there's three different pieces I'm going to talk about in the config that you need to get an access server running. Very first thing that you need, what most people like to do is they're going to create a loopback IP address. You can see here, uh, I actually have two, but the one that's important for this discussion is 10.10.10.10. So you'll see I have a, an interface loopback 0 with an IP and it's a slash 32 mask. Basically this IP address can be anything you want it to be. It's going to be only used locally most of the time uh, on your access server and you'll see why here in a minute. But step one, create a loopback address. Second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to start basically creating IP host entries for all your different devices. So it's kind of like a hosts file in Windows or Unix, um, if you ever worked with those. Basically the point of it is name resolution. So in other words, what this command does, let's just look at router 1. So IP host R1 2009 10.10.10.10. What's that what that is saying is when I type in uh telnet R1 or I type in simply R1 does the same thing. When I do that and I hit enter, that's telling the router go ahead and telnet to 10.10.10.10 or tell that to myself, that loopback zero address, on port number 2009. So basically it's tying the host name, R1, to the IP and port 10.10.10.10, port 2009. And we'll see why that's important here uh, coming up in the next step. So you're going to go ahead and associate every device that you want to connect up with a host with a, a host command. Now if you do a show host you can see all that information. So step one create the loopback, step two do your IP host commands and finally step three you need to check out the line configuration itself. Remember each one of these console cables is just a uh, asynchronous serial port and the config for those is right here. So there's uh, a couple couple basic things here. The no exec is very, very important. What that does is it tells the router, tells the access server, um, on the other end of these uh, rollover cables that connect to the consoles of all these devices, don't let those devices sort of create a connection back to the access server over that serial port. Don't let them connect back to the AS and try to log into the AS itself. We want to stop that from happening, so we configure no exec. Other important one is our transport input telnet. That tells the router to go ahead and enable the telnet protocol here on the lines, so that when we telnet to this access server on these certain port numbers, it will go ahead and allow us to connect to the consoles of all our different devices. So those are really the three pieces you need. Now. Let's talk a little bit more about this command here. When you look at this, I know I said you've got the port numbers, but how do those tie into your devices? Well, remember on the octopus cable, each different end of that cable, every piece of the octopus cable was labeled with a number 1 through 8. Okay, that comes into play here. So whatever cable was physically labeled number 1, Let's say we plug that into router 9, or R9. So, basically the, uh, the writing that's physically on the cable correlates to a specific port number. And it's always whatever the line number is, or whatever the number is on the cable, plus 2000 on a 2500 series router. 
you can see that with show line so all these TTY lines these are my 16 different uh, lines so in other words whatever uh, cable on the octopus cable was labeled number one right here which was uh, let's see which one was that 2001 so that was router 9 um, basically what that means is if we tell that to this access server on port 2001 because it's 1 plus 2000 if we tell that to the AS on port 2001 what the AS is going to do is it's going to connect us to the console of whatever device we have plugged in there on uh, number one. So at the moment I have cable number one plugged into router nine, which means if I tell that to my access server here on port 2001, I'll be on the console of router nine. So pretty simple concept. And that's about it for configuring an access server. Now, how do you go about accessing your devices? I'll show you guys. So, like I said, when you look at show host, if I type in router 9, it should tell that to 10.10.10.10 10 .10 10 .10 10 10 port 2001. So, I'm going to type R9. Actually, let's do R1 because I know that one's on at the moment. So, when I do that, you'll see trying R1 so it resolves it to 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 port 2009 and boom here we are I hit enter now I'm on the console of router 1 and it's just as if I was in the room well that's great but what if I want to go back and access another device here's the secret I'm gonna hit control shift 6 and then the X character so again let me go back it's control shift 6 and then X and that will go ahead and bounce me back to the access server where I can then say something like R2. Now it will go ahead and connect to port 2010 or whatever I associated with that name. Now I'm on the console of router 2. Say I want to bounce back. Control Shift 6 X. Now I'm back on the access server. Do a show session. We'll show you what sessions you have open. Now let's say I want to bounce back to router 1. I can say resume R1. Takes me back to the console of R1. Now I want to bounce back to R2. Control Shift 6 X resume R2. And here I am. So you can see it very quickly allows me to bounce back and forth between sessions. Control Shift 6 X. Now if I just hit enter here it's going to go back to the first one, I believe, in the list. Actually, the last one. So, router 2. I'm going to pop back. Let's open one to the frame relay switch. So, I've got a host in here. FRSW. Now, I'm on my frame relay switch. Control Shift 6 X. Show session. And you can see I have all these open. Now, to disconnect these sessions, you can say disconnect and then the session number so that's kind of the long about way to go about things the more direct way if I just fire up um, a telnet client like putty what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna telnet to 10.1.5. let let's see what is this 10.1.5.3 so if I simply just tell that to the access server 10.1.5.3 but I change the port number to whatever device I want so let's say it was router 1 where was router 1? router 1 was on uh, port 2009 so if I tell that to port 2009 it should put me on the console of router 1 Let's give it a try. Here's my new Telnet window. So I've Telneted to the AS on port 2009, and you can see I'm on Router 1's console. When I exit out, it closes, closes down, but it's as if you were directly connected to the console physically. 
you have to go ahead and close out of it. That's about it for uh, configuring an access server. I hope this video has been uh, useful for you guys. To recap, there's three things you really need to do. One, create a loopback address. Two, you're going to tie all your devices to that loopback address uh, on the relevant port numbers. The port number you use is always the line number of the device plus 2000 which you can get from show line again and the third thing was the line configuration don't forget your no exec and your transport input telnet probably the two biggest problems I see with access server configurations there so um, that's about it guys for this video thanks for watching you can follow me on twitter if you like at jasterino check out the youtube channel over at uh, youtube.com slash Asterino Networks, and of course the blog at AsterinoNetworks.com. Thanks again, guys, and until next time, keep studying hard.